Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here, and we've had a lot of questions from folks that are moving to the area about commute times in the Metroplex. That's kind of what we call the whole Dallas-Fort Worth area, the DFW Metroplex, or North Texas, if you prefer that term. Uh, so we want to talk really specifically in this video just about how long does it take to get from one place to another. So uh, we've had questions about, you know, most of them are how long does it take to get to downtown Dallas. We'll talk a little bit about Fort Worth as well. And some of the areas that are really booming uh, where people uh, are focused on not necessarily downtown Dallas. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of growth uh, in the North Dallas area, McKinney Frisco area, uh, out towards Prosper, where a lot of people are going the opposite directions that they used to go. So, you know, if you know the area, some of this is going to sound familiar, but stay tuned. There may be some surprises. And if you're thinking about a move to the area or you're new to the area, this should be really, really helpful. So you've got a couple of main thoroughfares here. You've got 75 Central Expressway. It, it, it gets called both of those things, right? The main highway here through Dallas, extending north all the way to Oklahoma, turns into 45 on the south side all the way down to Houston and Galveston and to the coast. And then in 45, I mean in Fort Worth, you've got Highway 35, uh, kind of north-south, and then Highway 30 connecting both cities east-west, Highway 20 to the south. But the, the most of the questions that we're getting are, you know, how long does it take? If I, if I move to Plano, how long is it going to take me to get to Dallas? And the answer to that question, like all of these questions, is going to depend a lot on time of day and things like that. But generally speaking, Plano to Dallas at the moment is probably in that 40-minute range. It's going to take you a little more than 30 minutes. Shouldn't take you a lot more than 45, barring an accident or, or the absolute worst travel times. Uh, Richardson, we get a ton of questions about. Richardson should be in that 30 to 40 minute window. It can take longer um, if you leave at the wrong time of day or uh, again, if there's uh, you know excessive traffic or a huge event or, or an accident or something like that. And of course, that's gonna be true for all these. So, you know, on the 75 side on Dallas, you're looking Richardson 30 to 40, Plano, you know, kind of 40 to 50 gets a little bit longer. And, and all these cities are big. So obviously in one area, it's gonna be shorter than the other. When you get up into Allen, that's when you're really starting to creep up on uh, near an hour. Uh, it's a straight shot in, but traffic really starts to kind of build up here at 75 and 635, and that can really slow you down depending on where you're coming from. If you get up into McKinney, you're absolutely looking at every bit of an hour, and sometimes uh, it could be as much as 90 minutes. Um, so just something to think about. There are people that make that commute every single day and there's some benefits to living in those areas that make that a worthy trade-off for a lot of people. Frisco is probably the area that we get this question the absolute most about, right? What is my commute from Frisco? Frisco is exploding with growth right now. You know, Cowboys headquarters, Toyota, a lot of, you know, PepsiCo, uh, Frito-Lay Pepsi, lot going on there, tons of residential and retail development. But Frisco to downtown Dallas is tricky, and here's the reason. You know, Frisco is becoming a very, very big area. And if you're uh, near kind of 121 in the tollway, you could definitely be downtown in, in under an hour with smooth, smooth traffic. Um, but that could easily, if you're at 380 in the tollway, that could easily be 90 minutes with bad traffic. It could be more. Um, so Frisco, you know, is, is, a, is a big, tall, uh, area. Now, there are parts of Frisco where you may prefer to cut over to 75. So again, that can change a lot. But Frisco is absolutely in that 45 minutes to an hour. And if you get caught in traffic, it could be an hour to 90 minutes for sure. Now, a lot of people are living in some of these northern suburbs and commuting up to Frisco. That is a much, much easier commute because you're sort of going against the traffic. There's a ton of people coming in every morning and headed out every evening, as is the case in most big cities. But again, we're starting to see some reverse commuters that are living in town for some of the positives there and commuting out to McKinney uh, or Frisco. And, a lot, and really Richardson has been that way for years where people are kind of communicating uh, laterally because Richardson has a huge midday professional population uh, with a lot of uh, large buildings and corporate employers. Um, a couple of other areas that are really interesting is once you kind of get into the mid cities of Euless, Hearst, Bedford, um, up into Grapevine, now you're kind of making these diagonal commutes and unfortunately they tend to be a little rough. Um, so that Grapevine to Dallas commute is about the same as the Frisco to Dallas commute. Um, it gets pretty convoluted and congested here 
uh, anywhere near the airport. There's, there's been construction in these areas for years and years and years. So at the moment, Grapevine into Dallas is gonna look like an hour. Grapevine into Fort Worth is gonna be about half of that, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, when you get up into Louisville, you've got a much straighter shot into Dallas. Again, 45 minutes to an hour there. It can actually be faster than Grapevine at times, depending on traffic and which way you kind of cut over. Um, and then as you get up into Little Elm and beyond, north of Frisco, and you get into Prosper, you know, those are a full 90 minutes into downtown. Let's kind of head over to the Fort Worth side of things and look at some of the some of the bigger chunks. Obviously, I'm not mentioning everything along the way because you can get a pretty good feel uh, relative distances and things like that. But if you're in the Fort Worth area, it's a smaller community as a whole. You know, geographically, it's a it's a, a smaller land mass. There are fewer uh, major highways and things. Once you're into Fort Worth, most things are within about a 30 minute range. If they're inside kind of the 820 loop, um, this this right here, um, Chisholm Trail is, is a new, uh, really great roadway uh, that cuts through Benbrook and allows for a lot of um, faster commuting from the communities south and west of Fort Worth to get into town really, really quickly. So Benbrook here is nothing. 15 to 20 minutes most of the time to get into Fort Worth. Of course, it can be longer at the highest travel times with accidents and things like this. You know, for example, White Settlement to downtown Fort Worth ought to be about 10 minutes. Not a big drive at all, 10 to 15 minutes. When you get up into Keller, that's probably a 30 minute proposition there just because there is a lot of congestion and growth and construction on that north side. You know, there isn't as much commuting from Roanoke and Argyle into town as you'd think. Those are smaller communities and they tend to be um, kind of tight knit. Obviously, some people are making that commute and these tend to be 30 to 45 minutes as you get up into here. Denton is really a thriving, massively quickly growing community and it's a good hour plus from Fort Worth. If you catch it at a really, really wonderful time where there's not a ton of traffic, that might actually happen in 45 minutes or so. But Denton to Dallas is, is going to be 90 minutes, you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes with a ton of traffic, this can just be a really, really messy way to go because there's not a lot of options. That 35 East and 35 West and high traffic is pretty messy. One of the worst roads in town at busy you know, business commuting time is going to be 635 or LBJ. Um, there are some express lanes there that can absolutely speed that up, but they're a little bit expensive. Uh, so uh, 635 is not a toll road, but you have the option to use it as a toll road so you can speed up that commute. Again, 30 connecting things, um, you know, at high traffic times, there's a ton of commuting happening back and forth. So the drive from Dallas to Fort Worth is going to be at least 90 minutes. Almost any time in morning or evening, midday, it can open up a little bit, but uh, as close as they kind of look, they're they're gonna be uh, they're gonna, that, that's not a super fun drive almost any time. Um, there's a lot of people making that drive every day, and again, there are trade-offs depending on what your lifestyle demands or requires or what you want in a community. So there are more people making the Fort Worth to Dallas drive than vice versa. That's just due to population size and opportunities and jobs and things like that. Um, so Weatherford, just to give you an example here on the map, I want to make sure that's still in the shot. Weatherford here to Fort Worth, for example, is only about a 20 to 30 minute drive. And the reason is as much as this area is growing up, it's still a really clean shot. There's not as much congestion there. So it seems like Weatherford to Fort Worth wouldn't be a whole lot worse than say Fort Worth to Irving but this area is so busy and congested, so many more exits, so many more lights, so many more accidents, so many more vehicles, that it just so happens that uh, mileage is not always the best uh, you know, reflection of, of how long that commute time is going to be. Um, so when you get east of Dallas, just to kind of circle back this area, there's a ton of development in this area, Rockwall, Rowlett, Wiley, Saxe, Murphy, Nevada, Lucas, Parker, these areas. Now the good news is for years and years, George Bush or 190, which is a tollway, didn't fully connect all the way back to Highway 30. Once that happened, areas like Rowlett and Rockwall, that commute time became much, much less. 
and then 78 heads all the way out here. So that's a great cut through. A lot of people are taking 78 actually all the way down to 30 and in, which makes the commute from this area much less than you would think. This is one of our hot spots of growth for people that are looking for a little bit more affordable, a little bit larger real estate options that still want to be able to commute into Dallas uh, relatively quickly. So from uh, you know Wiley, Saxe, Murphy area to Dallas is still probably on a good time at a good day, 30 to 40 minutes, on a slow day, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but the trade-off for some of these communities, this is really an attractive kind of quadrant to be able to get in. There's some, there's some great lakes and recreation out here too. Now, when you get down into Mesquite and Forney, those are straight shots in on 80 and 30. Um, but once you get here, 30 gets pretty tight and congested. You've got a lot of that traffic coming in from Rockwall, Rowlett, Forney, Mesquite, and all of that. So that's another one of those areas where there's kind of only one option in, and it really locks up right there. So these areas are still looking at 45 minutes to an hour out here. Mesquite's probably 20, 30 minutes on a great day, 45 minutes on, um, on a busy day. So again, distance from town isn't always the best measure. So hopefully this is helpful. Obviously I didn't cover every single area. We would love to see a bunch of questions and comments down below. We'll do our very best to, to pop in there. You know what we don't need? If you disagree with me, you don't need to correct me down there. It's okay if you do, we're always happy to get feedback. But obviously there's a wide range on these things. We just wanted to give you some indicators based on, again, if you're thinking about moving to the area, what might your life look like? Are you gonna be spending an hour and a half each way to work? There are people that do that, but you need to decide what three hours a day in the car is worth to you. Is it worth uh, being able to get afford a larger home on a larger lot or being close to something that you wanna be close to um, or not? And so hopefully this has been helpful for you to figure that out. Again, if you have questions about something specific, uh, comment down below. If we could ever help you make a move to one or more of these areas, if you're looking to buy a property or two, uh, we'd love to help you figure out what that looks like. What's your drive to work? What's your drive to church, the grocery store, the ballpark, those kind of things gonna look like? And of course, what other amenities and features and offerings do those cities each individually have? There's a ton more videos here on the channel that are helpful for you. If you're thinking about a move to the area or within the area, so check those out, like them, subscribe to our channel, and we'll keep making great videos for you in the future. If my team and I at the Todd Germani Home Selling Team can ever earn your trust or your business and help you buy, sell, or move, plenty of our information is gonna be on the screen or down below. We'd love to chat with you and help out. I will talk to you on the next one. Take care.